My video about how to get started with RoboFlow amassed a lot of views and comments. And due to this, the RoboFlow team reached out to me to make a subsequent video because their platform has evolved and they got a cool new features. So today, in this video, I'm teaching you everything you need to know about RoboFlow workflows. RoboFlow workflows help you to quickly build vision applications. By just connecting blocks, you'll be able to build production-ready vision applications that can also be deployed on edge devices. I guess you don't want to miss any detail in this video. So just sit, relax, grab your cup of coffee, and I will take you through everything you need to know about RoboFlow workflows. Ready to do it? Let's get right into it. All right, guys. So to start off, make sure you fire up your browser and open RoboFlow. So you can just open up a new tab. Just type roboflow.com. Alrighty, so after the login process, you can see over here that we have projects, workflows, monitoring, deployment, and settings. What we are going to learn today is related to workflows. So make sure you quickly click on workflows, okay? After clicking on workflows, you get a nice looking page like this where you have a sample of a workflow created by the RoboFlow team. So quickly, before we create our new workflow, workflow is just the step-by-step -step approaches you follow to complete a task. So if you are to detect these boxes in this particular image, these step-by-step -step blocks you put together is the workflow, okay? So the step-by-step -step approach you follow to complete a task, that is known as the workflow. All right, so now I'll create my new workflow by clicking on create workflow. And this will bring me this page where we have a sample workflow, simple workflow. So we just get an input add model and the output so what we are going to do today is to detect some objects in an image so we'll be detecting drinks to be specific and then from there we'll visualize this bounding box and see all the other things we can do using the roboflow workflow so quickly i'll click on input and over here you can see you can use an image as an input or a video file so if you want to use an image, there are a couple of ways you can do. You can just quickly upload image from your desktop or you can even enter the URL to an image on the web. So I have an image on the desktop, so I'll just click here and then this will uh, allow me to upload my image. But before that, you can also use a video file, but you have to host this video on your own server and make sure you connect to that particular local server. I'm not going to do this. We'll be using image. So you just click back on image, select file, and uh, I'm going to upload the image of this drink right here. All right. So right after uploading this image, I've completed my input part. The next step is to add a model. Okay. So click on add model and there are different varieties of models here based on what you want to do if you want to perform object detection you can select object detection model if you want to do segmentation we have segmentation model here we have single label classification model and so on a whole lot of models okay you can use florence 2 open ai for instance which is one of my favorite model of course embedding models gaze detection so a whole lot of models okay just click and you are good to go so i'm going to do detection i'll click on detection and this gives you the option to train or use your own custom model. So if you have a data set, which I teach you how to train your custom object detection model in the previous tutorial, you can follow that tutorial to train your custom model. But if you are like me, who is just detecting bottles or drinks, then a pre-trained model will be fine. Okay, so I'll click on browse pre-trained models. And over here, we have a whole lot of different pre-trained models we can use. So we have YOLO V8, we have YOLO NAS, YOLO 10, YOLO 11, and so on. We can also use models from the RoboFlow universe, okay? So RoboFlow universe is a place where you can see a whole lot of data sets, so free data sets, and also free models to use. So they are public, trained by people, and they have open source them so you can use. So these two models here, which are people detection and vehicle detection, are from RoboFlow universe, and they are free, you can use them. But I'll be choosing YOLO V8. So I'll start with YOLO V8 and I can switch to any models at all. And in case you have trained your own models too, you can just click here your models and you can select from any of your models. Okay. Other than that, you can use public models. I also teach you how to use models from your RoboFlow Universe later. So let's continue for now. So I click on YOLO V8 and I'll click on save. And this will add YOLO V8 object detection to my workflow. So now I have an 
image in the input and that image will be passed through this object detection and i will get some output you can also add up some parameters here so you can play with some of the parameter model parameters here you can see the confidence if you want to increase the confidence by default is 40 percent you can increase it the iou threshold you can also play with it so there are a whole lot of things you can do here but i will leave them by default and all i will do here is to test this workflow okay so i'll click on test workflow and you can see just by clicking on run this will run through your entire workflow and it will detect everything it can see in this particular image all right so these are the model predictions and these are the bounding box information that's given us from the image but what you can do is to take this one step ahead by visualizing the detections on the image itself so by doing that you can just come back to object detection before the output you can add another block here so you click on plus here and what you want to do is to visualize so you come to visualization click here and there are a whole lot of visualizations you can do okay so you can see grid visualization key point visualization polygon zone visualization a whole lot of them so you just choose the one you want to do and in my case i'm just going to do a bounding box visualization so i'll quickly click on this and this will also add this to my workflow so let me zoom out so that you guys can see and now we have our bounding box visualization and over here just as the object detection model you can also uh, play with some of the parameters here okay so you can let's say for instance you can increase the thickness of the bounding box which i'm going to set to four by default is two you can also make the bounding box the edges of the bounding box round or something like that but i'll leave it and the value here is between zero and one so all the numbers between zero and one okay so i'll leave it by default 0.0, .0 you can change it you can play with it all right so from here let's just test our workflow once again and over here i'll click on run and this is going to detect the object and also i'll be able to visualize the bounding box information so let me quickly expand this and you can see as usual we have this information but now we have the image here and the object visualization block have taken place so you can see it is able to detect three drinks the rest of them are not well detected and uh we can now change the object detection model to see if another model can just perform this job better all right before we move on to that you can view the image here so when you switch from json to visuals this takes you to the images so you can now see how uh, objects are being detected on the image i'll switch back to json and what i'm going to do here is to change this object detection model all right so i'll come here to model and i'll click here and this will allow me to change to another model so you can see we have all the other models here so i'm going to choose yolo nas and then i'll click save so i think yolo nas is um, a little bit better than the yolo v8 so let's let me prove you wrong by clicking run again and let's see how yolo nas will detect the objects in this particular image and boom so you can see we have quite some number of predictions now this clearly shows that yolo nas is getting more information than yolo v8 and if i switch to visuals you can see um about six uh drinks now have been detected well okay so yolo nas is doing a greater job all right one other way to do this or to handle this to get all of these detected is to come back to your model and then uh make sure you decrease the confidence level so that it can be able to detect so instead of 40 percent i can change this to 20 percent okay so you can do 0 0.2 here and this will change the confidence to 20 percent so any object at all that the model have 20 percent confidence that it is a drink then it's going to detect it so you can still test this by testing the workflow to see if it will detect all the drinks all right so the output is in and quickly what i'll do is to switch to the visual tab and you can see clearly now yolunas have accurately detected all the drinks so we are good to go so guys you can see yolunas is quite powerful and um it detects accurately just that it's a little bit heavy or heavier than um yolo v8 all right so that's just out of the way so what we have now is that we have the inputs passed through object detection we also pass that through um, bounding box visualization and we are getting some 
outputs all right now we can add other blocks okay there are a whole lot of blocks you can add based on what you are doing so over here i can add a cropping block okay so so what i'll do here is to click here to add another branching block okay so when i click here i have another block because this block now also take the output from the object detection what i'm going to add is a dynamic crop okay so a cropping block okay so what this cropping block will do is that based on the detected object or based on the bounding box information we are going to crop that drink out so have these drinks individually one after the other so i will use a dynamic crop here we have crop visualization but we are not going to do that so let me use a dynamic crop and for that i'm not going to touch anything here i'll let it remain the same and what i'll do is to test my workflow so when I run this now, uh, the detected objects now both pass through the visualization block and also pass through the dynamic block. And now my up outputs are three. So you will get the output in the JSON format just as you've arranged your workflow. So when I zoom here now, you can see we have the model prediction, which is the first thing we've done. So from model prediction, we'll go to bounding box visualization and then we'll also move on to our dynamic crops. All right, so this is the visualization for the bounding box. So you can see it clearly here. From there, we have our dynamic crop. So the dynamic crop, based on the bounding box information, will crop out these drinks one after the other. So you can see we have them. They are predictions. They are weeds. We can we have sprites. So we have all of them one after the other. So you can see you can do this just by clicking, just by adding blocks. You don't need to write any code. RoboFlow is handling this for you seamlessly, okay? You can click on visuals to view this. So you can see we have the drinks one after the other. And this web, great. All right. So what about adding another block? Okay, so now let's try to add OpenAI block here. Or let's try to add some LLM. So I'll click here and I'll add another model. But over here now, what I'm going to add is to add OpenAI. So... When you scroll through the models, you can see we'll have OpenAI model, right? So you click on OpenAI here, and with this, you have to provide your OpenAI API key. So I'll quickly paste mine here, and I don't want you guys to see it. So make sure you generate your own API, and then you also have to give it a prompt. So after cropping those uh, drinks one after the other, I want to pass them through OpenAI. And I want OpenAI to extract the text on these drinks and also write a description about the drink for me. All right, so what I'm saying now is for each of the images, extract the text. So instead of images, I can change here to drinks because they are drinks. Let me be specific. So for each of the drinks, extract the text and write a description about it for me. All right, so we have an input image passes through object detection. From there, I split this same input. It passes through bounding box visualization so that I can visualize how well it's being dictated. And then I pass it through dynamic crop to crop all the um, objects in the image one after the other. And I'm passing that object into OpenAI so that OpenAI can um, write a description about the object and also extract any text on that object for me. So for the drinks, we have their names on them. So OpenAI will do that particular job. And you can see I have four different outputs here. So the four different outputs here are the detection, uh, model predictions, the bounding box visualization, the dynamic crop, and the OpenAI output. So let's test this one out. So quickly what I'll do here is to run this. And this is going to take some time because this will make requests using the OPAI, um, API for each of these drinks and it will write those description and also extract the text. So it's going to probably take some time. So you have to just make sure you grab your cup of coffee and wait for the results. And boom, here you have it. So you can see we have the object detection, which is the model predictions. We have them here. So moving on, you can see we have our bounding box visualization. So here is it. Then we have our dynamic crop. So the dynamic crop crops the images one after the other with the abounding box information. And we have them as follows. Then from there, we are expecting to get the open AI output. So let me scroll. And where is it? Okay, so here you can see our OpenAI output. So you can see this is the output from OpenAI. And OpenAI, this is the description I told you to write. So Coca-Cola is a classic 
carbonated salt drink. So you can see with this, we are getting everything. So OPI have what written this particular output for you for each of these drinks. And this is the output test from OPI. For each of these drinks, it has what written or it has done whatever you want it to do for you just by giving out that prompt. So if you should do this manually, you know it will take some time. You have to write this code one after the other, set up models here and there. And this is it takes a whole lot of time from developer perspective. It takes a whole lot of time to do this. But with RoboFlow, all you need to do is to assemble these blocks together. And with this, even non-coders, people who have uh, very little knowledge about coding can build a whole pipeline or can build a whole workflow and they will get things working. So you can see with this, building a real world application becomes something very, very, very easy. All you need is to connect these blocks together. And there are a whole lot of blocks, okay? So even before passing this to OpenAI, I can choose to blur this image by just adding a blurring block, okay? So you can see there are a whole lot of, you can click on view more blocks and a whole lot of them. So there are a whole lot of blocks you can use. So let's say you want to blur, you can see we have blur visualization, image blur. We can apply image blur just by putting it here. And over here, you have the option to choose between different types of blur. So Gaussian blur, average, bilateral blur. You can choose any of them. And when you run this pipeline, it's going to what blur the images before passing them through OpenAI. So all you need to do is to come up with what you want to do. And then you use these different blocks together, assemble them how you want them exactly, and you will get the output. All right, so now after getting this output, you can choose to deploy this. So this is the amazing part of it. So you just click on deploy and you have several options, okay? So you can allow RoboFlow to host this for you, all right? You can run this on your local machine or you can run a video file with this, okay? So you have these three different options, which is very, very good. You can also choose between different languages. So JavaScript, if you are doing something in the web and you need this in the JavaScript, just select your language. You can use Python, which is what I'm using. And when you click on run on local, then you have to make sure you follow this particular guide. You install the influence CLI and also make sure you copy this code with your API key. And then you'll be able to work. use this particular pipeline anywhere at all in your code. All right. So all the heavy lifting is done by RoboFlow. All you need to do is to come up with that fantastic idea and assemble these things together. So the code has been provided to you. All you need to do is to just use this. And I'm not going to work with this code because it's very easy to do. You can follow the documentation here and do it. So this is what you can achieve using the RoboFlow workflow. You can see it's very, very, very easy. So guys, um. Let me know what you think about this. Let me know what you guys will be building with this, okay? Let me know what you'll be building with these particular workflows. And you can share some of these ideas in the comment section. If this video is helpful, make sure you share it and also tag RoboFlow under this particular video. Leave a comment in case you don't understand anything and also leave uh, topics you want us to explore. I am open for that. And up until that, I will see you in the next tutorial.